Good morning. We've made it to Wednesday, <coughs> May the 27th, 2015, reading from my utmost for its highest. The Life That Lives, Luke 24, 49. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. The disciples had to tarry until the day of Pentecost, not for their own preparation only. They had to wait until the Lord was glorified historically. As soon as he was glorified, what happened? Peter preached. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. The parenthesis in John 7.39, For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified, does not apply to us. The Holy Ghost has been given. The Lord is glorified. The waiting depends not on God's providence, but on our fitness. The Holy Spirit's influence and power were at work before Pentecost, but he was not here. Immediately our Lord was glorified in ascension, the Holy Spirit came into this world, and he has been here ever since. We have to receive the revelation that he is here. The reception of the Holy Spirit is the maintained attitude of a believer. Let me read that again. The reception of the Holy Spirit is the maintained attitude of a believer. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive quickening life from the Ascended Lord. It is not the baptism of the Holy Ghost which changes men, but the power of the Ascended Christ coming into men's lives by the Holy Ghost that changes them. We too often divorce what the New Testament never divorces. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not an, an experience apart from Jesus Christ. It is the evidence of the ascended Christ. The baptism of the Holy Ghost does not make you, make you think of time or eternity. It is one amazing, glorious now. Makes me think of the verse in Hebrews, now faith. This is life eternal that they might know thee. Begin to know him now and finish never. Anxieties come when we begin to place our thoughts on the future. He says, cast all your cares on him because he careth for you. I think a lot of that has to do with casting yourself, your cares, and focusing on now, your friendship and fellowship with Jesus. <coughs> what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. 
Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with the load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find the solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised. Thou wilt all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory bright and clouded, there will be no need for prayer. Rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion there. May you have a conversation that's ongoing with your best friend Jesus today. As you enjoy his presence now, his fellowship now, his power now, his encouragement now, his ability now, may you be a source of blessing to others. Your focus, not on this world, not on yourself, not on your troubles, your focus is on the Lord Jesus. Blessings.